The Book of the Prophet Hosea Hosea was the son of Biri, and he prophesied during a dark and melancholic era of Israel's history, the period of the northern kingdom's decline and fall in the 8th century BC. According to the book, the apostasy of the people was rampant, having turned away from God in order to serve both the calves of Jeroboam and Baal, a Canaanite god. The book of Hosea says that during Hosea's lifetime, the kings of the northern kingdom, their aristocratic supporters, and the priests had led the people away from the law of God as given in the Pentateuch. It says that they forsook the worship of God, and they worshipped other gods, especially Baal, the Canaanite storm god, and Asherah, a Canaanite fertility god. Other sins followed, says the book, including homicide, perjury, theft, and sexual sin. Hosea declares that unless they repent of these sins, God will allow their nation to be destroyed, and the people will be taken into captivity by Assyria, the greatest nation of the time. The prophecy of Hosea centers around God's unending love towards a sinful Israel. In this text, God's agony is expressed over the betrayal of Israel. Hosea's name means salvation. Hosea was directed by God to marry a prostitute, and he did so. The marriage here is symbolic of the covenantal relationship between God and Israel. However, Israel had been unfaithful to God by following other gods and breaking the commandments, which were the terms of the covenant. Hence, Israel is symbolized by a harlot who violates the obligations of marriage to her husband. Later, Hosea and his wife, Gomer, have a son. God commands that the son be named Jezreel. This name refers to a valley in which much blood had been shed in Israel's history, especially by the kings of the northern kingdom. The naming of this son was to stand as a prophecy against the reigning house of the northern kingdom, that they would pay for that bloodshed. Jezreel's name means God sows. Later, the couple have a daughter, and God commands that she be named Lo Ruhama, meaning unloved, or pity, or pitied on, to show Israel that although God will still have pity on the southern kingdom, God will no longer have pity on the northern kingdom. Its destruction is imminent. There's speculation as to whether Lo Ruhama was the daughter of Hosea, or one of Gomer's lovers. Later, a son is born to Gomer, and it's also questionable whether this child was Hosea's, for God commands that his name be Lo Ami, and Lo Ami means not to my people. The child bore this name of shame to show that the northern kingdom would also be shamed, for its people would no longer be known as God's people. In other words, the northern kingdom had been rejected by God. In chapter 3, at God's command, Hosea seeks out Gomer once more. Either she has sold herself into slavery for debt, or she is with a lover who demands money in order to give her up, because Hosea has to buy her back. He takes her home, but refrains from sexual intimacy with her for many days, to symbolize the fact that Israel will be without a king for many years, but that God will take Israel back, even at a cost to himself. Chapters 4-14 through 14 spell out this allegory at length. Chapters 4-10 through 10 contain a series of oracles or prophetic sermons, showing exactly why God is rejecting the northern kingdom, or what the grounds are for the divorce. The Lord has a charge against Israel. There is no faithfulness. They have left God to play the whore. The rulers love shameful ways. God says, Hear this, O priests, O king. Israel shall stumble in its guilt. Ephraim is crushed in judgment. I will leave until they seek me. And then Hosea says, Come, let us return to the Lord. On the third day he will raise us up. But God says, I desire steadfast love, not offerings. Israel is defiled. The sins of Ephraim are revealed. They are like a heated oven. They call to Egypt and they go to Assyria. Woe to them, for they have strayed. A vulture is over Israel. The calf of Samaria shall be broken. The Lord will punish their sins, for Israel has forgotten his master. Hosea says, Rejoice not, O Israel. The day of punishment has come. God says, I will bereave them. I will drive them from my house. Hosea says, God will reject them. Israel is a rich vine, but the Lord will break down their altars. God says, nations shall be gathered against them. Hosea says, it is time to seek the Lord. Chapter 11 is God's lament over the necessity of giving up the northern kingdom. God promises not to give them up entirely, saying, When Israel was a child, I loved him, but the sword shall devour him. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? I will bring them home. In chapter 12, the prophet pleads for Israel's repentance. Jacob fought with God. Ephraim has said, I am rich, but I am the Lord. I spoke through the prophets. The Lord will repay Ephraim. Chapter 13 foretells the destruction of the kingdom at the hands of Assyria, because there has been no repentance. God says they make idols of silver, but I am the Lord. I will tear them open. Ephraim's sin is stored up. Shall I redeem them from death? And we know that the capital of the northern kingdom fell in 722 BC, and all the members of the upper classes and many of the ordinary people were taken captive and carried off to live as prisoners of war. 
In chapter 14, the final chapter, the prophet urges Israel to seek forgiveness and promises its restoration, and he urges the utmost fidelity to God, saying, O Israel, return to the Lord. And God says, I will heal their apostasy. They shall blossom like the vine. Whoever is wise, let him understand.